Very good morning and welcome to the Ladies Club. So good to have you in our company as we bring you the trailblazers and game changers when it comes to women's sports. And today it's on the football field because we tip our hats to those women that have made waves when it comes to women's football. Now, most of the time when we think about a sport, we measure it against our national team. So we're going to give you a little bit of background on Banyana Banyana. The team was officially formed in 1993 and in their very first official match, they they played against Swaziland. It was a 14-0 drubbing. But the highlight for the team, which, uh, whose nickname is Banyana Banyana, which means the girls, was when they qualified for the Olympic Games in 2012. And somebody that was instrumental in that is the captain of our national team. She's also our game changer for today. She's the most capped women's football player, man or woman, Janine van Veek. She's our game changer today. Good morning and welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here. Uh, remember, we are on social media, so easy to get involved in the conversation at sport at SABC at Bale and Kirtley. Use our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club. All right. So it's been a very busy period for you. Just come back yes, from America, um, managed to play with the Houston Dash and it's a big year for Banyana Banyana this year, hoping to qualify for the Women's World Cup. Yes, uh, really exciting, busy year for us. Um, last year was pretty quiet, although we won the Kosafa Cup. Um, with me being absent, I think the team did extremely well. Fifi played the role as the captain, so I think she she did really well, um, controlled the team well, and obviously won the Kosafa Cup. But this year, we're looking at a broader picture, which is qualifying for the World Cup. Um, and first, we need to qualify for the African Women's Championships, which will be later in the year in, in November. Um, and then that would be a qualifier for the World Cup in France next year. So we're really excited about it. We recently played Sweden. Um, and yes, the result uh, wasn't what we obviously wanted. But um, in terms of the, the team uh, structure and the development of the team is going really well. So it's a really exciting year for us. And you guys have to end in the top three Correct. at the African Women's Championship in November in order to qualify for the Women's World Cup in 2019. Correct. Um, and it's not that we have never qualified for the African Women's Championship. So we already see ourselves being there um, and competing. And I think for us having a friendly against a top quality team, international team such as Sweden so early in the year, uh, we mean business, you know, we, we know that we need to get ready and um, for some of us, unlike myself, it could be a last chance opportunity to make it to the World Cup. So I really hope that we make it this year and luck will be on our side, hopefully. We're going to speak more about uh, your goals and where you see yourself going following your time on the football field. But we always start the ladies club by looking at a trailblazer and this is somebody that has inspired and made a way for so many other women to actually follow. I want to know who inspired you, who's really inspired you and kind of when you think about women's football and somebody that really made an impact uh, for the game and for you in some way. Who would it be? I think when I when I started playing, it was more my uncle um, because he played football himself and took me to the football pitches when I was younger and so on. But when I got to play with the ladies and with the national team, it was always Fran that pushed me. Fran Nielsen Smith, technical director of, of, of women's football currently, and she was the, really the one that believed in me, got me clubs to play um, with in in the areas that are. are, are I couldn't find any ladies teams to play with when I was younger um, because women's football wasn't as big as it, as it is now. So she was the one that really pushed me hard and believed in me and made me believe in myself. And up until a couple of years ago when I came across uh, one of the best coaches in the world, Vera Powell, um, I think she has really brought out the best in me um, as a player and made me respect who I am and believe in, in myself. And even to this day, she is a great mentor of mine. Uh, we still communicate on a daily basis to hear you know, how things are going and what I need to work on and to improve. And she follows me, me greatly with, with my career and what I'm, what I'm doing currently. So on the development side of helping other girls, um, as well as my personal career of being a professional player overseas. So, yeah. We'll continue speaking to our game changer on the Ladies Club, our national captain for Banyana Banyana, Janine van Veek, after the break. Remember, on social media, so easy to get in touch with us. Hashtag the Ladies Club at sport at SABC. We'll be back after this. <laughs> Welcome.
Welcome back to the Ladies Club. Our game changer for today is none other than Banyana Banyana captain Janine Van Vake. She's returned after spending a year playing in the Women's Professional League in America with the Houston Dash and some of the game's biggest names. She's now returned to South Africa and she's putting all that experience into Banyana Banyana, hoping that our national team can qualify for the FIFA Women's World Cup, which will be taking place next year. A trailblazer, however, is from the game, but from America. She won an Olympic gold medal twice with her nation. She also won a Women's World Cup. Brianna Scurry, it was an unfortunate concussion that ended her professional career. But she had many, many years playing the game, over 150 caps for her nation and a number of accolades. And she's gone on to do so much more and actually be rewarded for it. So Brianna Scurry, a little bit of background on her. She pioneered the first paid professional women's soccer league as a founding player in 2001. For for her impact, her activism and her achievements in 2017, she was inducted into the National Soccer Hall of Fame in America. As one of the first African Americans and openly LGBT professional female soccer players, Brianna has championed diversity and equality throughout her legendary career. She's currently the assistant to the Washington Spirit within the women's professional game in America. Now, somebody that knows about playing in America, that's you. And Janine, for the men's game, it may be playing in Spain. That's the ultimate. Yeah. But for the women's game, it is in America. Yeah. It's always been the NWSL that, that stood out for, for me as a player. Um, you know, we, that's where footballers want to see themselves play in that league. It's so highly competitive. And um, it's everything I expected it to be the first time I went. It's competitive, week in, week out. And you've got to work your way at training and in games, obviously, to get to work for your first spot. So it's highly competitive playing with all those big names. I've had the, the, the chance and opportunity to play alongside the likes of Carly Lloyd, uh, which is a phenomenal athlete. Um, and she carries herself like a professional, very humble person as well. Um, and that's what you, as, a, as an athlete around the world, as a, a women's footballer, that's where you want to see yourself. And I uh, really... Um, honored and privileged that, uh, that I've had that opportunity and I will be going back this year again um, as my contract is, is renewed and I'm really excited to again you know give up my experience um, and show the world what, what I'm capable of. It was a head injury that ended the career of our trailblazer today Brianna Scurry. For any professional sports person, injury is a reality and you do as much as you can as a pro player to look after your body and to make sure that you're injury free. But something like a head injury is you can't do anything about that. Yeah, head injury is major um, in any sport, really. And I think in the States, it's even bigger where they actually control head injuries because of the likes of, um, you know, obviously a contact sport such as, as, as soccer, um, as they would mention it, but also American football. Um, so they really take care of, of that and they really do and scan you medically. Um, I remember when I went over, they scanned you from head to toe to make sure that you are in good condition. Um, I remember I couldn't play the first game. I couldn't have my first training session because I had an irregular heartbeat beat, um, and I've never had that. And they just kept me out of training and get, uh, the first game I couldn't play because of that. So um, they make 110% sure that you are fine before you step onto the field of play. So you had an irregular heartbeat? Does that just get sorted out so over like a week of sitting on the sidelines? No, I guess it was actually that I uh, was picking up some, you know, virus or flu and mm. stuff. After a couple of weeks, I found out that I was actually ill, but it was nothing major. Okay, so uh, tell us about actually receiving that phone call to say, you know what, we want to sign you. We want you to come to Houston Dash. Well, I got a phone call from uh, the, our former coach, uh, Randy Valdrum. Uh, he's been the Houston Dash coach for, I think, three to four, five years. Um, and when I received his call and he asked if I'm interested in coming, I was like, of course I'm interested in coming. Like, what do you expect of me? So it's, he, he said that he just 
watched a couple of videos of me. He watched me at the Olympic Games, and he's really interested in my leadership. Um, and it's something that obviously lacked in the Houston Dash team setup. And he needed me for that. And I was over the moon. I was really excited. And finally, my dream came true, you know. And I've worked for it my whole life. I've dreamt about it. And I actually lost hope because I was 29 years old. And I thought, you know what? It's never going to happen. You know, I might mm -hmm. as well give up. And But with your passion and the love for the sport that you have so much, you just continue. You get those days where you feel down. Um, but you get those days that you really feel good and no matter the age, I mean, if you look after your body and you keep your persistence in what you believe in, um, you would get there and that's exactly what I did. I mean, it's just incredible to think that you actually made your debut in the early 2000s and it took over a decade for you to actually achieve that dream of, you know, playing overseas. Yeah. I think it's a problem in South Africa because there's so much talent over here and it's not being looked at globally um, because we don't get the recognition of playing enough international competition matches where we compete against the likes of USA, Sweden, France. It's only now recently that we have showcased our talents at the Olympic Games that people want to or teams want to play us. Um, and before, no one really, it was only African teams that Banyana Banyana got to play. But yeah, so... That certainly was a turning point for women's football Definitely. when Banyana Banyana qualified for the Olympic Games. All of Definitely. a sudden, everything changed. We thought, you know, this is this is our opportunity. Everyone's going to see what we are about. And the first Olympic Games, yes, we didn't do so well because it was our first time experiences. The second time, we, I think the team was more structured, organized. We had a professional coach come in and we made a name for ourselves. Even though we didn't reach the stages we wanted to, we still competed against international teams that, you know, we competed against Sweden our very first game, only lost 1-0 and they were the runners-up of the Olympic Games. Um, so that is why they came over and wanted to play us again because they found us um, as, a, as a very difficult opponent to break down. And again, the, this recent game we played against, the, the coach said that South Africa has created so many more opportunities than most European countries have. And that's why they want to keep, continue to play us. And I think it's good for women's football in South Africa in general. And I, I do deserve, I do think that there are so many more players in the Banyana team that deserve to play overseas. When you speak to a couple of your teammates uh, from overseas and they know a little bit more now about South Africa and they know a little bit more now about Banyana Banyana because you've opened up that door for them, are they surprised when you tell them we don't have a professional women's football league? Yes, because the first person I spoke to when, she, when, when we spoke about South African football was Carly Lloyd. And she was saying when we played the U when Banyana Banyana played the US in the USA, they thought it was going to be a really easy game, um, in her honest opinion. And she said it was one of the toughest games that's, that USA has played at home uh, because they always play the likes of Russia and Croatia and South Africa really put up a good fight. And she said that she can't believe that these players are so talented, but yet we don't have a professional league. And how would we be if we have a professional league and we play competitive matches day in, day out? And then we would be able to compete against the world. So um, I'm glad she, she mentioned that and I'm glad I could speak out about it um, as well because we do deserve a professional league and I do believe that it will happen in, in the near future. So what are some of the lessons that Janine van Veek learned from the FIFA Women's Player of the Year of 2016, Carly Lloyd, and some of her other teammates and maybe opponents in the women's professional game in America playing for Houston Dash? That and so much more coming your way on at the Ladies Club. Stay with us. you're watching the ladies club so easy on social media these days on twitter at sports at sabc hashtag the ladies club same hashtag also on facebook we're chatting to our national captain for women's football janine van veek uh, janine i mentioned that uh, we'd like to know what you've learned maybe from players like carly lloyd and some of the opponents that you've met in america 
But I want to maybe broaden that a little bit. What's the greatest lesson that you've gotten from football throughout your career? I think um, that no matter what challenges you face, um, especially as a women's footballer in our country, that um, it really took some time to lift off the ground. Um, I think just your passion and the love that you have for the sport never makes or never made me want to quit. Um, there are so many girls that had an enormous amount of amount of talent and they ended up quitting because they couldn't make a career out of out of playing the sport and they needed to obviously uphold their families and needed to find find jobs and quit the game. Um, and that's the challenges that we face as female footballers in our country currently. And there are still girls in our national team that juggle you know, between two, three jobs and still playing for, for the national team just to, you know, get bread on the table. So it's a constant challenge that we are facing and we constantly hope and pray that we will get a professional league in our country so we can fully concentrate on, on what we love to do and our passion and our dreams and um, hopefully it will happen sometime. The story of JVW in your story and in your career is an interesting one because most people thought when you opened up the academy and when you opened up the team became a, a player coach for the side that maybe you were starting to wind down because most people open up clubs or they you know they get involved in a coaching perspective when maybe they feel as if now you know they've reached their peak yeah. as a player uh, how did that how did that dynamic work did you at some point feel like now it's time that I must actually slow down I did uh, there was a time that I thought, you know, what am I going to do after football? Um, I'm getting closer to the age, and this was when I reached 27, 28, before I even knew that I was going overseas. Um, and I thought, you know what, I need, need something to fall back on, and I don't want to go and find an office job. It's not what I'm good at, and I need to use who I am and people that really look up to me, I need to give back. To. And um, what I went through as a, as a young player, not being able to find ladies' teams to play with and obviously playing with boys, I thought it would be a good opportunity to um, give back to these girls and give an, an opportunity and platform for young girls to, to develop and guide them in the right direction. And not only on the field, but off the field as well. The challenges that they face are probably 90% of the time have faced myself. So I'm able to help guide them in the direction I feel that they need to go in order to reach their dreams. And I feel women's football is, is growing by the day, especially in our country. And there are so many girls out there that, that are becoming interested in in playing the game and obviously setting goals for themselves to be professional players to play for the national team to go overseas and make a career out of the sport and i just thought by, by doing this and giving the girls a platform i'm able to help them reach those goals could you have thought when you began what a success it would be i didn't um i just i didn't think of it as being as big as it is, as it is now. Um, I would just thought of giving back to these girls and giving the girls opportunity to play. And I didn't think that in a couple of years it would be this, this big. And we have about six teams currently playing in my club and about um, 3,000 girls playing in my JVW Schools League. And this is just in Gauteng. So they, every day you just see so many schools interested, girls being you know, eager to play the sport and wanting to grow in the sport and it's just phenomenal to see and be part of and I'm really proud of what I have accomplished to this far but it's not only me, it's the people that work around me. When I'm overseas, these are the people such as Lauren Duncan and Dear Albuquerque um, that really help push women's football um, from, from the opposite, well, the side of the world when I'm in, in the States doing my, my thing and focusing on my career. They are the ones that are pushing women's football aside. What has kept you motivated and kept you going to training? Because JVW was off the ground yeah. and, you know, things were, were happening. You were inspiring girls and the teams started getting bigger and you had to have different age groups yeah. and things were really happening. Yeah. But you never stopped. I think it was just that, you know, when you, 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 you think of your dream and you want to achieve, I'm a person, if I set a goal, I need to achieve it. And... Um, like I said before, I did lose hope. I did think it's not going to happen. But the passion and love that I have so much for the sport, um, I just carried on and I, I wasn't ready to quit um, and give up what I love to do. 
and obviously the people that are surrounded by you, that believe in you, that supported you, um, still support me to this day. And um, after my Houston Dash experience, I wasn't going to go back, um, even if they offered me a contract. But there's small little things that made me want to go back. People were saying, you are not done with your career. You, you still have so much in you. Why quit now? You know, make the most of the little time that you have in your career and make the best of it and see where you can get to. And, you know, I, you constantly, even as a professional athlete, you still need that motivation from the people around you. And uh, I'm really grateful and honored and privileged that I have these, these people around me to support me and, and keep pushing me. And um, that's why I think I am where I am today listening to them and obviously taking their advice and pushing myself. Uh, I'm going by an Instagram post that I saw and I'm going out on a limb here that I'm going to say that as much as you've got people motivating you, you've also got those people yeah. giving you criticism. Yeah. Um, and that's one thing I learned from Carly Lloyd. Um, there's so many people, if you, you search Carly Lloyd, there are a lot of hating on her, haters, uh, that the, the tell her that she's too old. I mean, I think she's 35, 36 years old, and she's still going strong. And she's one of the best uh, athletes I've played alongside with. Um, and she's so motivated, and she uses that criticism to to her advantage. And she really motivates her. She works extra hard. I've seen her after a training session how she takes another extra 45 minutes to an hour to work on what she feels she needs to work on just to prove those people wrong. And I think I've just followed in her footsteps as well. And I know there are a lot of people that um, don't approve of me or think I am too old. And I still, to this day, recently when we played Sweden, people telling me I'm too old, I should retire. And I feel I'm not ready and I'm going to prove you wrong. And um, I spoke to Carly as well. I told her what, what, um, what has been going on and you know how I should take it. And she's like, just concentrate on yourself. Concentrate what you are there to do and forget about those people. You will know when you're ready to, to give up. And I've taken it in and I think I had one of the best games, um, obviously, in, in a very long time against Sweden. So. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. <laughs> so it's always this wonderful thing about the TikTok clock. It's, it always goes too fast when you're having fun and when you just are so engrossed in a conversation. So uh, your quote that you live by um, that you'd like to share with your girls at JBW Academy and with viewers. Always have a quote, uh, talk with your feet, play with your heart. Um, and the same goes for people that look at you out there. You know, it's, it's all about here yeah, and what you give here. Yeah and what you have in here that will actually showcase who you are, what you are, how far you will come, um, and everything else will, will go with it. Will you give up football before, when you, before you go to a Women's World Cup? I doubt I will. Um, and I'm really going to push hard, push the team hard to, to, to get to the World Cup next year in France. Um, and I do strongly believe that we will qualify. Um, but if not, I don't know how, how much I can still, you know, still give to the national team, but this is, this is what I want to achieve this year, and hopefully we can do that. We certainly hope so. She is the most capped South African football player, man or woman, over 143 caps for South Africa. Our national captain for the women's team, Janine van Beek. She was our game changer for today. Let's continue the conversation on social media at Sport at SABC, hashtag the ladies club. Until we meet again, remember that greatness is never given, it's always earned. Goodbye.